years ago, in 2020, we developed a tool to facilitate the diagnosis of Q fever in dairy herd, so using beet uh, bulk tank meal with a, a FTA card to make the sample and then to send it to a, a laboratory. Uh, and thanks to this, we were able to uh, have a lot of samples coming from uh, more than 15 countries, mostly in Europe, but also in North America, in North Africa, in Middle East. The name of this test is Q-Test, and the Q-Test is first the diagnosis, but also a form where the vet or the farmer can give the clinical signs of a disease, of a reproductive disorder, so it can be abortion, but it can be also uh, retained placenta or the metritis or infertility. And thanks to this, we have now a, a, a huge quantity of data, so more than 2,000 tests uh, uh, carried out uh, since 2020. We try to understand if the prevalence of Q-fever is different depending on the clinical signs. And so on one side, uh, we gathered all the positive results uh, related to uh, abortion, and on the other side, all the results uh, related to the other clini uh, clinical signs, we saw that there was not significant difference between the, the two groups regarding the prevalence. So the prevalence in both groups is around 40%, uh, meaning that uh, even if the clinical signs can be considered as mild, the Q fever can be also responsible for these clinical signs. We have to consider Q fever even if the clinical signs are mild uh, or non-severe, I could say. Uh, so even if there are no abortion in the herd, but only an abnormal weight of endometritis or an abnormal weight of retained fetal membranes, or just a decrease in the fertility parameters, we can consider that Q fever can be responsible for these troubles. And so Q fever has to be first diagnosed and second uh, controlled. carried out in Germany uh, in collaboration with uh, an expert in uh, three dairy farms uh, the assessment of ketoprofen as an alternative of antibiotic treatment uh, for mild and moderate mastitis. So we had uh, two groups. The first group was classically treated with antibiotics and the other group was treated with ketoprofen without any antibiotics. However, if there was a decrease in the condition of the animal, the animal was treated with antibiotics. What is interesting is that in most of the cases of the animals treated with ketoprofen, we didn't have to give an additional treatment with antibiotics. And therefore, there was a decrease in the antibiotic consumption, and this decrease is huge. It is 87%. And the consequence of that is first a more rational use of antibiotics, so less consumption, or of course, less risk of antibiotic resistance. The second outcome is that thanks to that, because the withdrawal period of ketoprofen is zero for milk, uh, animals uh, can be milked for human consumption as soon as the milk has a normal appearance. And we also show that we save more between 30 and 40% of milk production. So we have globally a new approach in the treatment of uh, mild and moderate mastitis without using anti-infective, in most of the cases, less wasted milk and uh, improvement in the, uh, the incomes for the farmer.